Good morning, Floss Tube. It's Cowgirl Kate here today, and uh, I'm so happy to see you here. If you're a new subscriber, thank you so much. If you're a regular viewer, thank you again, and my apologies that it's been a while because, oh my goodness, has it ever been a while? But uh, things here are kind of winding down again. Um, we've been busy with uh, goats having their babies and sheep having their babies. So it's just been kind of a crazy month, but it's starting to taper down and we'll get the majority of our lambs coming in May. Um, long story behind that, we lost our barn where we typically have the baby pens going on. We lost that last year to a bad storm, tornado that came through our area. So we've had to revamp things and in order for there to be not so many babies happening in the coldest part of the winter, we've opted to delay the breeding until later on and then the lamps will be mostly coming in May. So the ones that are born now are just the ones for um, the boys to show at the fair. So we've had to vamp things. That's what you do, you know. You play with the hand you're dealt. So anyway, um, that's all been going good. Um, if you happen to hear a strange noise, it's because there's a baby goat in the mudroom right now. He's getting warmed up. So eventually, sometime this morning, he'll need to go back out to Mama, but um, yeah, it's a crazy time of year, and today's really cold, so he's in there getting warmed up. But anyway, um, that's kind of a brief update on what's going on here on the farm. Now for what's going on with stitching. Um, first off, and, uh, and I'll talk more about this later in the video, but uh, thank you so much to um, the outpouring of support that I've received from my design of Brunhilde. Um, it just warms my heart. Thank you so much. I'm so happy that um, people like her and, you know, I can't wait to see um, other people um, stitch up their journey with her because it'll be fun to see if they want to change things or keep the same colors or what they do. You know, they might change the cat to something else. Who knows? But anyway, I'm looking forward to it. Um, let's see. We'll start out with some shout outs. And um, this is a lady I've been subscribed to, but uh, with the whole uh, chaos that the last six months have been, I haven't had a whole lot of time to watch Floss Tube, but um, she's a lady that I've been subscribed to before, but I wanted to give her a shout out. Her name is Stitchy Mac, and I will link her channel below. She is stitching a chatelaine entirely in DMC, and it is beautiful. So any of you who are, you know, having a little bit of doubt on the variegated threads versus the DMC, um, if you go see her videos, she will put those fears to rest because it is stunning. They're just, they're so well designed, it really doesn't matter what fiber you're using. So, Stitchy Mac, go check her out. Um, the other lady that I'd like to give a shout out to is uh, Saho Dream Stitch. She's from Japan. She has a lot of beautiful projects and she's sharing a bit of Japanese culture too, which is so fascinating to me because I just I love hearing about um, how regular people, you know, go about their daily lives in other countries. You know, you see movie stars, you know, going to foreign countries and whatever, and it's just like, yeah, but that's not how people actually live. That's not what people actually see. That's, that's a celebrity, you know, it's totally different. So, it's just, it's fascinating. I love it. I love it seeing, you know, regular, everyday people like me and how they go about in other countries. So, that's Saho. Uh, that's uh, really the the only ones I can think of right now because, like I said, it's been kind of crazy and, you know, everything's just kind of all, yeah. Everything's all just kind of topsy-turvy right now. So, but I need to get this video done because it's been a long minute. So, let's um, get into some, well, Christmas. Christmas just happened, and now it's Happy New Year already. Um, I hope yours has been really well to you because, you know, it's a new year, a new start. Boy, do you have fun with that in the stitchy world. So, um, for the start, 
Chris, uh, I had a few new starts last fall. I'm only going to show a couple of them in this video because everything is just kind of all packed away from like the whole Christmas chaos, holidays, and and being sick and and babies happening out in the barn. So anyway, I just I'm just going to skim over them. Um, one of the main ones that I have going on it's a it's a current whip uh, that I take traveling with me is this one. And it is Northern Expressions Needlework. And if you can see in the chart, it's made entirely of specialty stitches, and I love that. Um, the fibers that I'm using are Needle Necessities um, hand dyed cottons. And I really like those fibers because they're, you get a lot of it, and they're not very expensive, you know, compared to like a silk or whatever. Um, I do have a sampler or a thread gatherer. There you can see it. That white one. That one is a silk because I couldn't find um, a variegated that I liked in white of that line. They had like pink or you know some other shade in there, and this one was just paint or er, creams, very neutral. And this is fabric. The fabric is uh, coffee dyed, and that's all I have done of it so far. It's just the, the borders for where the field of stars will be. But I love working on this project. It's, uh, it's a good one to zone out on, you know, while I'm waiting around for people to get their appointments done. So that one's a uh, pretty, pretty regular contender, but I only work on it when I'm out and about and traveling. The other one I started on Christmas Day, and it is this one, and I've been saving it for two years now. There we go. For two years now, uh, just because I wanted to start it on Christmas Day, and you know, kind of make it all special. The fabric is one that I hand dyed myself. And that's all I got done of it. So pretty measly uh, progress, you could say. But I only worked on it a little bit the Christmas day. And then the fibers that I'm using are, again, the needle necessities. Um, one is a really deep forest green. And the other one is, uh, it ranges from like bright red to burgundy. So very, very rich and because I wasn't sure if I wanted to do it in burgundy and green or red and green, and I went for one that had both. So it was an easy compromise. Um, my other current whips I'll get into later in the video. But, anyways, um, first off, let's talk Christmas. I hope if you celebrated Christmas that you had a very happy one. Um, ours was very quiet, um, just uh, with family, which is always wonderful, and uh, we had the big party two days before Christmas, so yeah, it was, Christmas is Christmas, what can I say, you know, so yeah, it was, it was a very nice Christmas. Um, this is probably the first year that I've ever received. Um, Christmas stash, I guess you could say, or, or stitching related Christmas, um, since Kirsten uh, passed away. And that's been several years now, just because, well, up until this year, my husband never really bothered because he didn't know what to get and, you know, that sort of thing. But um, the presents that I'm going to show you now have traveled all the way from across the pond. So the first one up is this beauty that Anne Marie has stitched and sent on to live with me because except for my bedroom and the music room that I'm sitting in now everything in my house is cowboys and Native American so this little Indian maid is going to look stunning once I find a proper frame for her and oh what a treasure thank you Anne Marie I just love her she makes me happy every time I unroll it and look at her. And, you know, I can't wait to get a frame in her. 
get her on the wall. That'll be awesome. The other um, stitchy gift that Anne Marie sent me was has quite a history behind it. Um, when Kirsten and I first started talking, and um, you're talking like 16 years ago, she had finished this project and she was showing me, you know, all of her finishes that she had done and, you know, one of them was this. And you can see why I would fall in love with it. There we go. Noble Quest. That's what it is. But, um, Kirsten, uh, had finished it. It was, like, framed on her wall. Stunning. And I said, oh my gosh, where? And I was kind of new to this whole hobby. She'd been in it for years. I says, oh my goodness, where did you ever find that? And so she, she told me and blah, blah, and so forth. But I could never track it down. Um, I guess it was out of print by the time I had, you know, come along. And uh, she's like, well, that's okay. Um, the chart is pretty beat up, but I'll send you the chart and, you know, maybe you can make something out of it. But, you know, no guarantees. I was like, well, okay, I'll, I'll try. So, um, in the end, what happened was she sent me the chart from the kit, but she was one who used pencil and pen to cross off her, uh, you know, to keep track of where she had stitched. So, the chart was really beat up. I mean, the folds were torn or illegible. Sorry. So it was very hard to decipher and, you know, we, we tried to find a way around it, but I was like, oh, it's, it's okay, you know, it was very awesome that you, you know, send it to me and maybe someday when I'm a better stitcher, I'll figure it out. And we just kind of left it at that and thought, well, maybe we'll run across one second hand or whatever. Well, then, <laughs> and here we are, you know, 16 years later and I still hadn't found it. And then Anne Marie dropped a bomb on me and sent this. So it's just kind of funny, um, I'm convinced that uh, Kirsten has had a hand in um, in this endeavor and uh, all things are connected so I'm sure, you know, something put a bug in Anne Marie's ear to send this and, you know, I'm sure Kirsten was involved in some way. So thank you Anne Marie, um, I will treasure this. Um, I'm hoping that this will be a new start. Um, either this month or next month and uh, I can't wait I just need to find a fabric that I'm comfortable working with because Ada and I just don't get along I don't know why we just don't so that was um, Christmas from Anne Marie so the other thing that um, happened at Christmas um, and my husband and I usually don't exchange Christmas presents at Christmas. We usually wait a couple of weeks and then we go do ours. Well, <laughs> what had happened was he took me to the LNS, um, and that would be the Stitchery Nook out in Osage, Iowa. If you have not been there, you need to go. It's like, I don't know, it's like where the Pope lives for Stitchers, really. But anyway, um, he had taken me there, but I had, I didn't know that that was supposed to be my Christmas present. And uh, so I was going around, I was getting a few things for some other stitchers I know, and, and then he came and picked me up and said, well, what'd you find? And I was telling him, and he's like, well, you know, and this was on the way home, by the way. Uh, he's like, well, you know, that was supposed to be your Christmas present. And I was like, well, you didn't say nothing, you know. So I was like, okay. He goes, oh, it's all right. I got to go back next week. So the following week we went, he dropped me off, and then I got my Christmas, which, um, thanks to his generosity, was a base for my daylight. Um, this one here. See? It's the round magnifier one. So, I, which is why I'm out here. I am just thrilled to death because it's been a game changer. I've been able to get so much progress done because now I have a place to put this daylight safely, you know. It's spent the last five years in its box in my closet because 
I didn't have the base for it and I didn't have a table that was sturdy enough to clamp it to. But now it's got the little wheelie base so I can either work on it out here or in my room, but out here works best because then I can stay up late and I can get tons done. So that's been a game changer. I'm hoping that it means more progress because I can finally see. And finally the Hades will get to come out and play because I'll be able to see what I'm doing. So can't wait for that. Oh, it's going to be so exciting. But um, what has been working on, I haven't got those out yet, but what has been happening, I feel like I'm babbling, I'm sorry. What has been happily, happening is um, quite a bit of chatelaine progress. For the New Year's new start, I started the Desert Mandela, and I'll show that here in a couple minutes. But um, with Martina's passing, which was, oh, just a, a terrible blow to the stitching community because she had no equals. I mean, there are many designers out there who are phenomenal, but I mean, Martina could, oh my gosh. My head just spins with all the creativity that she was able to generate from designing people to architecture to buildings made out of specialty stitches to, you know, gardens and flowers and it just boggles the mind. So with her passing, I made it my goal in life to collect the patterns that I need, <laughs> the patterns that I want. Let, let's be realistic here for um, to complete the collection and then I'll worry about kitting them up later because you know it usually takes me three or four years to get one ready to go anyway no big deal but so I made that my goal my main focus for 2018 and um, when Martina did pass away that's pretty much all my husband heard about for two days and how he knows Martina is classes because how I got started in Chatelaine's was back when she would offer a year-long class and you signed up and you got the pieces for it and she still did that up until the end but that's how he um, registers Chatelaine's classes All right. and, and to help him uh, make the distinction it's oh that's my needlework class so he knows what I'm talking about. Well, that poor man, he <laughs> he gets such a rough end of the year because my birthday is just a few days after Christmas. So he gets a double whammy. Poor guy. But my goodness. Um, he really pulled out all the stops this round. And I was not expecting it. But... Um, he and the boys, he told me on my birthday, hey, you know what, why don't you go get your classes? And I says, really? And he's like, yeah, go get six of them. I said, are you dead serious? You know how much it is? He's like, I know, but it's okay. Just go go do it. You, you've waited all year to, to buy one, so make it worth your time. Okay. Well, you didn't have to tell me twice, I'll tell you that. But the ones that, um, that uh, wound up in the cart, I will show you now. Um, the first one is the Scotland, or not Scotland, Ireland, sorry, Ireland, there we go. And then the mushroom one. And that one just reminds me of Fern Gully. That's what I think of every time I see it. And then, uh, years ago, one of the chatelaine classes that I had started, I don't have the project started, but I, you know, got each monthly um, piece of the chart or whatever, was Herbularius. Now that one is still in the process of being kitted, just because it got bumped down the queue by others. But um, Martina had talked about back then that it would be a series. And so I was like, oh, okay, I need to finish out the set. And so that's what I went for this time. 
So this one is the Rosarium. And that one just reminds me of my sister because her middle name is Rose and she can grow anything. And I want to say 10 years ago, I was trying to, <laughs> you'll laugh, but I was trying to um, propagate new species of roses and new colors and varieties in my backyard. And I mean, yeah, it was a lot of fun, but unfortunately we had an orphan lamb that came and she was bottle fed one, but she went and she buzzed all the tops off in my little patch that I had so I never even know knew what what these roses were gonna look like when they did bloom because she buzzed them off such is life um, this one is the tinctorium um, pomerium and this one just kind of reminds me of um, my dad in a way because his hobby was planting trees and every year we planted like two or three thousand little sap seedling trees to, you know, re redo the forest and and we had every kind of fruit tree in the yard, so we lived on that all summer. And then poison garden. Maybe that a little bigger. So, so those are living with me now, and uh, the wish list got thinned down quite a bit. But um, throughout the year, I will uh, I will stick to that goal, and that'll be my main focus. Uh, what's helping with that? I gave up pop because this is more important than my caffeine. So pop is out of the way, and I'm using that for um, it should that should probably get a chatelaine once a month, and we'll get through it that way until they're finally there because you never know. I mean, I'm not going to be a, a worry ward or anything about, you know, the channeling website might go down or whatever. Who knows? I have no idea and I have no no uh, business worrying about it, I'm sure. But at the same time, you know, nobody expected Martina to be gone. So this is just my way of taking care of the whole I wish I could have, you know. So we're going to be doing that. They will be my main focus. So, in light of that, shall we talk more about the desert mandala that is actually in progress? So just let me grab it here. All right. This is what is going on with it so far. The fabric is a 28 count even weave. Yeah, it's even weave. And it was a neutral beige kind of color. Just put it up here while I'm talking. It was a neutral beige kind of color. And I took tan writ dye and ice. Well, first I had coffee dyed it and then I changed my mind. So then I rinsed out all the coffee. <laughs> and got some ice and some tan writ powder and I just very sparingly sprinkled the powder on the ice and then I used a hair dryer to speed up the process and I also kept spraying it with um, a vinegar and water dilution um, just to kind of speed up the process and what that did I don't know if my camera is going to pick it up but I'm going to bring the fabric in closer it's kind of made little speckles all over the fabric and I love it because it looks like sand rather than the heavy modeling that um, usually happens when I would ice dye. You know, it comes out very striking. This just made it more speckled and I don't know if it was using the vinegar water not very much, like maybe, maybe, maybe a fourth a cup in a spray bottle like this. Handy, I had it here, didn't I? Um, so that, I don't know if that was what, what made it work well or whatever, but that's how I did it. That's how I got the effect that it created. And I'm going to try it again in the future to see if I can get another fabric to behave the same way. 
um, changes that I've done to this one so far. Uh, I have not stitched the rayon thread. Now it calls for rayon or anchor marlet is the proper word for it. Calls for anchor marlet down in these cactuses and then up here in some of the cloud storm clouds. Um, I substituted a string of Krynik. Um, so, and the black that I used in the cliffs and basically anywhere in there except for the over one is um, three strands. So it gets really nice full coverage because this is on 28 count. Um, the little animals are one over one. But um, the rest of the areas are three strands. And then for that anchor marlet symbol, I just added the, um, the Krynik, just to give it a little bit of a difference. And I really like how that turned out because it's a subtle and it's not marlet. Now, the Desert Mandala calls for 99 yards of anchor marlet. That's terrifying. I don't know where else in the chart yet that it calls for that. So what I'm going to do is look ahead. I'm probably not going to use the anchor marlet because a little I could understand, but there's 99 yards of it. So what I, and I have a, I have a DMC black rayon. I'll try that. And if I don't like it, I'll just use regular DMC. Um, that's, that's the only changes I've done on it so far. What, what will happen eventually is, and why I've, um, moved this one up into the queue is because three years ago, I adopted Tango, she's a Mustang, and then two burros, Bugs and Daffy. Now, Tango is from Nevada, and Bugs and Daffy are from Arizona. So I thought, oh gosh, I need to do the desert chatelaine because this will be like their tribute. So that was my goal, and I started about kidding up that one. However, there is no way in flippity flip that I'm ever going to stitch that scorpion. The rattlesnake I can handle. I, 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 I grew up in an area that had rattlesnakes. So, you know, we learned from a young age, you know, how to deal with them. But, scorpions? Oh no. This is like, oh god, gross. So I'm not stitching the scorpion. Instead, I'm going to move the rattlesnake down into his corner and then up where the rattlesnake originally is, I'm going to put um, Tango in the burrows. I'll just make my own little um, personalization there. And um, then it really will be a tribute piece for for my uh, Mustang journey. So, how fun is that? So those are my plans for that that desert chatelaine. And uh, it would be a lot of fun. A lot of fun, I think. So, last but not least, um, Brunhilde. Oh, Brunhilde. I have her here. So I can give some really nice uh, close-ups. And I hope that the fabric will take, um, you know, on, the, on this camera. We'll see. So, here is Brunhilde so far. And she is at 15 hours of progress. Um, she is being stitched on Ghoulish, which is a fabric from Under the Sea Fabrics. So, thank you, Leslie, if you happen to be watching. Um, she just, oh, I just love it. It just, it turned out to be such a perfect choice for her, so thank you for that. And, um, yeah, we'll get you situated here, and hopefully lots of people will, will like it on that. And if not her, well, they might like her that fabric for something else. So she's coming along very nicely. I can't wait to put all the beads and the bling on her. Um, it's working up very quickly. Very excited about that. So if you are interested in um, 
making your own version of Brunhilde. She's available at Eye of the Magpie by Kate on Etsy, which is my little store there. And uh, if you want to pop over, you know, feel free. I appreciate the, the kind words and the comments that um, everybody's been sending. So, um, yeah, just uh, thank you guys. You all are the best people, you know. Um, other than that, uh, there are quite a few other designs in the works. And they're ranging all over from pretty ladies. There's a couple of witches. There's a couple of samplers. Uh, there's a couple of mermaids. And there's a merman. Two mermen. So there's a lot of things going on. It's just a matter of the ideas are easy to come by. It's the sitting down and doing the charting all on the computer that, that takes me forever. So hopefully now that things are kind of quieted down outside that, you know, things can start happening on the computer before spring rush happens. You know, kind of, I don't have my own schedule. I have uh, mother nature's to contend with. So anyway, um, once again, I want to thank you all for your kindness and your support. Um, I don't know, I don't know what to say. And it's just, it's mind blowing. Um, I, I guess I can't say anything else, but y'all are the best people. So for now, I better go check on that little baby goat that's uh, waiting in the basement for, you know, some attention and uh, see where my day heads out from there. So thank yous for watching. Take care of yourselves, and I hope to see you all real soon on your channels. Thanks. Bye.